All right, here we go. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Rays Reflection Podcast. There are a lot of options out there, so I appreciate that you make me one of them. Per usual, we are free to subscribe wherever you listen. Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, YouTube, wherever you want to listen, we have an option, and you most certainly can. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And of course, follow me on the socials at I'm Nathaniel Reyes. Before we get into the introduction, I have to give some love to my partners. Mad Rabbit Tattoo Aftercare, BYOB, build your own bundle of whatever you want and save 20% off when you use promo code RAYSREFLECTION. And Jocko Fuel, Pumpkin Spice Protein Powder is back for a limited time. Save 10% off when you use promo code RAYSREFLECTION. Now, on to the introduction of my guest. There are a lot of firsts in life that I will never forget. My first baseball game, which I got hit by a uh, pitch in the face. My first day of college, which I never finished. Uh, the first car I purchased, which was unfortunately repossessed. All these are sadly true. But this is the first time I used threads to get a guest on my pod. And this is the first time that I have a Netflix star on the Razor Reflection podcast, which I'm certain will go better than the aforementioned experiences. So no pressure to you, Kayla. <laughs> she is a former teacher. She has competed in many food competition shows, such as Cake Wars, Is It Cake 2 on Netflix. She has her own business called Cheers to Cake. So without further ado, the wonderful, lovely Kayla Giddens. Welcome to the pod. <laughs> Thank you. Man, that was really good. I like that. I I I pride myself on them. I pride myself on. Them. <laughs> Thank the, you so the much for taking time of the out of car. Day. That one. Oh, that's a crazy one. Say that you again. Been through a lot. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Right. I. You know, homeboy has been through it, but at the same time, that's life. You know, it is. young. Because the reason why my first car was repossessed was because I was nineteen, twenty, and I had just gotten like a summer job. And so they only need like two or three pay stubs, what have you. And uh, I had leased the new car because I wanted to impress people. And yes. I was like, yeah. And then it was just a summer job. So I didn't have the money to pay it back. <laughs> and I was just just young and dumb. So I thought, whatever, like, it can't be that bad. Admittingly, I did not learn about credit or anything yes. like that. So. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So that unfortunately. Needs a, that needs to be a whole, like you know, thing in school. Like they should definitely teach you about like credit and everything. That's hilarious. For sure. <laughs> funny now, probably wasn't funny then. <laughs> You're right. And at the same time, I really was just like one of those just stupid individuals. And I was like, whatever, like, oh, well, yeah. they take the car, whatever. I can't afford it. And then I realized, wait a minute, four years later, I'm like, wait, I'm struggling to buy a car now because of <laughs> that back then. So anyways, it it's embarrassing, <laughs> but it's okay. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit and chat with me. I want to learn more about you. So, Kayla, you were, you're were you from Louisiana. Is that where you were born and raised? Yes. Uh, born and raised in Lafayette, Louisiana, and that's where I'm, I still am today. I'm pretty sure I will never leave permanently because I just, I really love it here. It's the people are good. The food is unmatched. I mean, I've been around really? the world. I've traveled and everybody kind of really likes to travel for food. You get to try different things. And I was having this conversation with my friend the other day and I was like, you know, when I travel, I'm I'm always prepared to be disappointed with the food because it just doesn't quite touch the it Cajun uh, no. cuisine. <laughs> so is Popeye's any is is there any sort of like resemblance or similarities to that or is that just processed at that point no uh <laughs> i love popeyes my daughter loves popeyes okay um their red beans are right she loves it so much so it popeyes is really good and like they're like red beans and rice and stuff like that it reminds me of what you might like buy a a box red beans and rice to yep. taste like and i think it's really good but if you get like my mom's red beans and rice it's not really it's not that you know it's, it's kind of similar but like really elevated and you yeah. can tell it was cooked in a good kitchen yeah, home <laughs> like you cooking. can just tell the soul in the food i love it the soul it's true it, it's soul food and it's uh southern hospitality those type of things so yes, yes. no yeah. i agree i agree um, it's so funny because my sister, she's 10 years younger than me and I'm the oldest of three. 
and I'm like the most outgoing. I'm just like totally, everybody just looks at me like I'm some crazy out there girl in my family. And I like own that, love it. So I am going to the Philippines in, next month Ooh, that's exciting. Uh, for a cake show. It's like I'm one of the U.S. ambassadors to represent the U.S. in this cake show. And it's not like a television show. It's more like a um, like a convention. Oh, wow. And so I, I got my little sister on board. And so she doesn't do cakes or anything, but she does sister adventures. So I was like, let's go, whatever. And so she is actually really a picky eater. And I was looking to see what was around. We're going to go. We'll be in Manila, so the capital. And there's a Popeye's. There's oh. like a Popeye's right next door. So I was like, girl, you are good. Like you can eat Popeye's all the time. Yep. <laughs> like, so it's crazy. I did not realize Popeye's was out there like that. So Yeah, no, I, I'm in New England and there is some Popeye's up here. I try. What did I try? Oh, my goodness. I'm going to butcher it. The the powdered donut type of thing. Oh. Uh, beignet. Beignet. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yes, that was pretty good. They had it at Popeye's and I tried it one time and I was like, this is pretty good. But then someone was like, no, it's way better down south. Like, this is just, yes. like you said, it's 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 comparable, but it's not mama's cooking, if that makes sense. Yes. There's, like, plenty of beignets in town. So beignets is really, so I'm in Lafayette. Lafayette's, like, two hours from New Orleans. So, um, which very totally culturally, like, crazy. We're more Cajun. Uh, New Orleans is more Creole. But beignets are really big. In New Orleans. And of course, we have really good beignets here too. But like, you'll get them locally. Um, and you, it's like a hit or miss. But there's this one little like beignet truck. It's called the beignet box. Oh my God, those things. If I see that anywhere, it's like we're hitting a U. We're <laughs> like, we're going. So, and actually, when I realized that, like, I'm always going to stop at this one truck, I, it's always parked in the same spot. So now I just like don't go there because I can only have, you know, so many beignets a week. It's getting. You're like, crazy. I, you're like, I can't, I can't possibly keep consuming beignets. Cause <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, okay. <laughs> uh, now no, I don't know if this is where you are, but is crawfish or there's a type of exotic fish, right? That's very popular <laughs> down there. Is that right? I, I could be wrong. <laughs> exotic yeah, fish. I know, right? I All right. Something we don't eat in New England. That's what I'm basically saying. <laughs> you're my favorite. Uh, that's hilarious. No. So a, a crawfish. Yes. So it's huge. I think that actually the city I'm in, Lafayette, is like probably the center of like crawfish. Because okay. so crawfish are they're mud bugs where like they live in the mud. So yeah. you wouldn't find them like in in like the ocean or something like that, okay. like lobster. They they look like lobster, but they're really small. So actually, when you drive around, you know, during crawfish season, which isn't all the time, but you'll see like little mud like towers in people's yards it'll be they'll, they're everywhere and it's it's those are crawfish holes yeah. so they'll be in the front yard really but people will like make crawfish ponds which is just like a really shallow pond in their backyard and then they like fish them so, so they do yeah. they like they like harvest them is that what it is yes. okay yes so okay. they like go around in their little boat their little boat like it's got to be a tiny boat and they just like pick up the traps empty the traps it's kind of like so because you're from new england right which Oh, geography. Um, so, yes, I'm from New England. So that, okay. So that's like, yo, crabs are big there. Crabs, lobster, occasionally shrimp. Not not so much, but uh, lobsters are really big here. Like we, uh, we're known for like the main lobster rolls and things like that. Okay, yes. Yes. Yeah, so it's kind of like, I guess kind of like crabs, but but crabs are in the ocean as well. So, but they're not, but a mud, a mud fish and, though. That's crazy. I yeah. also I've also seen this video one time down in Louisiana in a bayou where they uh, that that's a that's a thing, right? That's a, it is, yes. It, it, what is that like a, a pond, a mud pond? Is that like the best way to describe how would you yes. describe that? I know, you know, I was kind of wondering. So uh my husband and I, he's from Maryland, so he's like big crab guy. Yep. Um, we just actually got a house and it's on a river. And so I was wondering the same thing. Cause I'm like, Ooh, we're on the bayou. But then I was like, wait, are we really on the bayou? I don't know. It's like the river and it's kind of muddy. So it looks like bayou. I don't know. So I think a bayou is more like a swampy, yes, marshy kind of a pond thing. Yes. Yes. But so the reason why I brought that up is because I saw a video one time where they caught a fish and the fish's face looked like an alligator and it had little teeth. And I'm like, yes. they have those alligator gar. 
Is that I'm like, what is this thing? And it didn't have arms or legs. It was, and I'm like, what is this creature? Like this is insanity. Like, and this is, you know, we we sit here and we fantasize about deep ocean, outer space, and I'm like, this is people's everyday in their backyard. This is everyday life. So it's a little insane yeah. to think about it for a person who's not acclimated to the to those type of surroundings. I know it is kind of crazy. Like. I feel pretty, I, I love being from here. And I think it's really cool because everywhere is like really culturally different. Some places are richer in culture than others. Yep. But yeah, I think Louisiana has got some stuff with it. Like this yeah. place you come here and I really do feel like people are like, what? You know, this is really different. It's not like Billy Madison different. Yeah. You know, it's not like we're not <laughs> doing that. I mean, depending, there's some small towns that I'm, I personally witnessed some things that are like, well, I'm, that could be on Billy Madison, but. Is that the one, Billy Madison? Is it? No, it's not Billy Madison. What's the show? The movie. The movie? Oh, Waterboy. Oh, oh, Waterboy. Waterboy. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. I just watched Billy Madison the other day. But yeah, I no, just watched Big Waterboy. Daddy. So there you go. We, we just, <laughs> I, I saw that this weekend. Yeah. So it's not like that country bumpkin. Like, it's not like, I don't know. Have you seen The Waterboy? Yes, I have. Where he's the football player. And yes. Yeah. And it's yes. like, you know, whatever. Yeah, and it's like, so, yeah, it's like this totally. desolated area where there's lo like your neighbors are 20 miles away. So, yeah, it's crazy. Yes. And yeah. like they're really I mean, they're really poking fun at the at the Cajun thing. But like it's it's not like that, but it's very different. It's fun. Yeah. It's crazy over here. That's fun. That's fun. So but you love it. It sounds like you're going to stay there your whole life, which is Probably. which is really cool. Yeah. You are also a former educator. Prior to be you becoming a full time baker, talk to me about what led you to want to be an educator. That is a funny thing. Uh, so, like, I uh, went to college here in uh, Lafayette. So I went to uh, UL, um, the University of Louisiana, Raging Cajuns, and loved that. And I graduated with like just a general like a, um, arts and humanities degree. Yep. And so, I was really like, what? am I going to do with this thing? And so I, I just realized that you could be a teacher by going online and like getting your certification that way, which was like my quickest way to make like full-time pay because really four year degree, if it's not in, if you're not trying to be a nurse or if you're not trying to be like something specific, you know, or getting a degree in teaching like, or something like that needs it. It's like, what? there was nothing I could do with my degree. There was nothing. I was like, right. okay. So actually nothing really led me to wanting to particularly be a teacher other than really just wanting a decent job that paid but, well. But you did it and, for a while. Yeah. So I was just like, what am I going to do? So that's it. And then once I started to teach, of course, um, I really liked it. Like I love, I think the kids are funny. Like it's really fun. Like we, you know, I, and I was teaching science to begin with. And then I went to English and theater and like, I had a good time doing it. It's like, you know, there's a lot of things like teachers are underpaid and they're overworked. Yeah. And that's so true. But I would really just focus on like the fact that I would get off work at three o'clock every day and like have, you know, holidays off, summers off. Like that's pretty yes. awesome. Yep. So I just kind of fell into that um, and that, you know, profession. And I loved it. And um, I was trying all the things when I first started. I was the unicycle coach at the same middle school that I went to. The unicycle coach. Okay. Yes. So crazy is I can ride a unicycle. So I was like, well, I'm going to be the unicycle coach. <laughs> so, um, so like, I don't know. It just like teaching is really cool. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you really have to have the passion for it though, which sometimes I didn't, my passion lies in like cakes and obviously like competitions, you yep. know, TV shows and things like I, just really thrive on that kind of thing. So I had to, it was when I walked away, you know, I still kind of want to be a teacher again. Every now and then I'm like, man, that would be fun to be like teaching, yeah. you know, when the holidays come around or you think of like oh, homecoming festivities, but like not that bad. Right. Cause I'm not, I'm not going back, but <laughs> I miss it sometimes. There is a certain, there is a certain aspect of it that I think just pulls at your heartstrings and it gravitates yeah. you towards because si similar to me, I, I did work with kids for a long time and it's something I loved and I did it recreationally. I did, I was a teacher's assistant. So I was like a para, I think some, yes. some districts yeah. call it that. And uh, it was a really good experience to be able to interact with the kids and 
they really do have this way of picking you up when you're sad and and making that joke like you said and and yeah. having this kind of relationship where yes you're you're almost this mentorship to them and they they acknowledge that and so there's this respect and trust and it, it is a very I, I know what you mean I know what you mean because it is yeah. a very loving like, field to be in yeah definitely and it's also it made me a better person because you become more I think I taught for like seven years and so in the beginning maybe I had one idea of like who kids were or whatever and what their family like was life was like. And I would approach each day like, okay, like everybody woke up like me, like we're all, you know, good eating yeah. breakfast, coming to school to learn. And like, I really became culturally aware mm -hmm. and like socially aware that Agreed. no, like not everybody is waking up and getting out of their bed if they even have a bed. Right. Cause yeah. I didn't teach, it wasn't like really low level, but it was kind of like, they were low income level schools, like they they just qualified. So it's like, it helped me as a person not to just assume anyone that I meet, like the way that I approach any conversation or meeting someone just not assume that they're having a great day and a great life and just being a little more sensitive. And then like learning people as you know them, right. But yeah, that really that it's it's, it's an experience being a teacher that like, or even I mean, even more so like teachers assistants all the time my teachers assistants because i'll be like man thank god for those people because this, i'm sure i mean i'm sure you were like running around you're probably doing so much more than you would even you were like they don't pay me enough i'm sure <laughs> yes there and, and similar to i had to find other aspects to make money while doing it like i, I wasn't a unicycle coach but i would do like the basketball team the volleyball team the running yeah. teams things like that to be able to be involved and also just have more income but it's another way of gaining those relationships at the same yeah. time but also exposure and very similar to you because i i grew up in that lower income type of environment and i think when i worked with kids it teaches you that level of empathy mm -hmm. not not yeah. just to the lower income but everyone because at the end of the day you look at them and you're like wow they're still learning the world is just so different to them yeah. than it is for you and I who are who are a little bit older. So it, it is a really cool feeling. And I I I like I love to hear people with that, you know, kinship, uh, yeah. so to speak. <laughs> I, I want to hear a little bit more about the unicycle coach. So you said you can ride a unicycle. Yes. So I learned how to ride a unicycle. Like I said, so I went to the same school that I taught at. Yep. And um, I like I have this thing. <laughs> and it's led me to where I am today, where I just want to do the things, right? I'm like, oh, you just what, go you know, for what it. yeah, I'm just like, what activities can I get into? So I remember when I got in sixth grade, I was so excited. I was like ready to have a locker because it was like middle school, it's like junior high. And I was like, yeah, let's do all the things and let me try out for all the teams and whatever. And um, you couldn't try out, you couldn't do anything. And I was like, what? You couldn't do anything until you got to seventh grade. And so I was like, well, what can I do? And it was a unicycle team. So it was the same school. And this unicycle team has been there for a long time. It's Judy's Middle School. And uh, so I joined the unicycle team. And then I learned how to ride. And we would go in Mardi Gras parades. Like, they would ride in Mardi Gras parades. Oh, that's fun. They would, I'm trying to think, like, they would, like, different activities or whatever um events would hire the unicycle team to come like do a little riding performance thing yes so anyway i i did it only sixth grade because then i was like man i don't know like i was catching a little like flack about being on the unicycle team <laughs> so i was like one year is good but <clears throat> sort of like i That's think i was funny. in college i went to a yard sale and they had a unicycle and it was like 10 bucks so i was like man let me pick this one up and see if i can still ride it and i can and so weird my relationship with the unicycle because I think I owe all of my cake success <laughs> to the unicycle because the first show that I ever tried to be on was Cake Wars. And so I submitted a video and my little sister, she was videoing me and I was like, look, I'm gonna ride a unicycle for the video. And she was like, that has nothing to do with it. And I was like, yeah, but it might like stick out to them. Yeah. So then I was like riding and I was like, I'm really good at cakes. Like, can't wait to, to get on the show, whatever. And then I like fell and she was like, all right, let's redo it. And I was like, no, 
we're not going to redo it. Let's send them this. <laughs> and then, so like, this was at the beginning of like, when editing and all that was really good. Like, you know, I think I had a little online editor and I, and when I fell, I made the thing go like beep. And then I was like, Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Like it scratches out with the colored lines. Yep. And I was like, I promise I'm better at cakes than I am at writing a unicycle. And so I submitted that. And then I got a call and they were like, Oh my God, we loved it. We love this. It's so awesome. Like you're, we can't believe you can write a unicycle. We, we love you. And then they were like, sorry though. We are already like fully casted. And I was like, all right, cool. I couldn't even believe like that they called me. And then about a month later, they called me back and they were like, Kayla, we are casting again. We remembered your video. Like, let's, let's go through this like casting process. And so then I got all the way through and then I got on the show and I'm like, man, that's thanks to the M cycle. (laughs) Yes. Yes. You stood out and you showed, you showed off. I think I heard somebody who's a pretty successful reality TV show star. He said that in his audition tape, he was dressed in like a, a Halloween suit. And that just, <laughs> it just, sh- it, it stands out. And so yeah. I, I really think that that's impressive. I personally, I'm terrible at balance. I even struggle. <laughs> you know how as a child, you'll see a little sidewalk thing and you're walking it and you're walking it like a balance yeah. beam. I, to this day, at almost 30 years old, I'm going to be 30 in a month, I still fall off. So I couldn't imagine. But you still do it. I you still, still try, so you know. I still do try. <laughs> I've just never been a, a flexible, limber individual. I've always played sports, but I've never been, like, I, I've seen people try to do yoga, and I'm like, I could never. I, I have a hard time balancing standing. I have to hold my ear when I'm standing on one leg. It's just not <laughs> a... Uh, it's not a pleasant sight, so I'm glad that you were, but I'm glad that you were able to get success and you are yes. able to ride a unicycle. Because I, I would even be afraid to just even get on personally. I, I, I yeah. would, because there's no handlebar, right? No, probably, See, <laughs> probably best that you don't think. Yeah, like, I'm not going. Yeah, it's kind of the thing where everybody's like, I can do that, I can do that, and then people wipe they out. They try, right? and it's like I'm like, guys, listen, you're gonna fall, you're gonna whatever. So we always try. I'm like. I, we have a whole thing. I'm like, okay, if you must try, do it in the grass. And then they all, everyone ends up falling. Yeah. It yeah. gets, it gets wild. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's really cool though. That's really cool. Yeah. I, I, I've never been able to even, I, I would never even be able to try it, but I think that's super cool that you could. Yes. Well, thank you. So it actually connects to like, so one of the things that I'm so upset about sort of on, is it cake? Um, on episode five so i think i think it was five i was like on the on the in the gallery like sitting to i wasn't competing that show so i was like sitting off to the side like me pete miko and um the host mikey day comes out and he has a unicycle because at the beginning they asked us all these questions like random skills whatever and I was like, oh my gosh. And unicycles have different size tires and I can't ride every one. Like it's oh. a, like it's only one size tire that I know how to personally ride. But he had the right one. And I was like, oh man, like I can't believe like, you know, and they wanted me to ride it. So I was like, well, I'm wearing heels. So they brought out tennis shoes and everything like this whole ordeal. So I was like, all right, I'm going to ride this thing. So then I get on there and I'm like riding the unicycle around the set. The bakers are like baking for their life. It's like the last 30 minutes for things. And I'm just like riding around. They're like, okay, ride into the camera, do this. Like it was a solid 20 minute like production of me riding the unicycle. And they didn't even put it in the show. I was going to say, yeah, I don't think I saw that. Yeah. Not there. I was like, I know they did it. (laughs) It didn't make the cut. Oh my goodness. So isn't that? Crazy. That is kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy. Right. But I mean, ultimately, a really cool experience. Oh, God. Yeah, it was so cool. So let's switch into that now because you brought it up. So prior to your most recent television show, Is It Cake 2, you competed in a handful of other ones and you won a majority of them. Could you share about some of those experiences of those other shows like Cake Wars? And I think you did Cake Wars Champions, too, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Can you just talk a little bit about those experiences? Yes. So... Every other experience besides Is It Cake was really different from Is It Cake, which Mm -hmm. is really crazy because uh, I think I was on five or four or something. Um, And 
they were all uh, one episode shows, which made Is It Cake really a big deal for me because it was like a whole season. And so every other show like Cake Wars, Cake Wars Champs, um, things like that, I would go. So you get chosen. So, I, you know, I actually casted, I applied to the first Cake Wars. And then the subsequent shows after that, they actually you just become like a cake person in the system. I feel like, because they'll call me up for, you know, different shows. And, um, sometimes I could do it. Sometimes I can't, but, um, pretty much, you know, they would choose like the head baker and then I could choose an assistant. And for the majority of the shows also, I chose my best friend Fallon. We went to the same middle school together. Speaking of like, we're friends. She's the teacher as well. She's still teaching at that middle school. Oh, wow. Like, for her. like, yeah, it's just like really staying local over here. And so um, we would go and you would only go for like three days. It would be like two or three nights. And it would be kind of like this marathon of like work, like work, work, like, you know, no sleep. You can't eat, can't sleep. Like you just have to, or at least that's how we approached it. And I do think that's why like we usually would win. Because for the first show, especially, it's like, oh, my God, this is so huge. Like, this opportunity doesn't come around a lot. Like, right. this isn't, you know, we're this is not a game. So we took it so seriously. And um, so you go and, you know, there's all these ins and outs, right? So I signed, like, non-disclosure agreements to talk to you about all the ins and outs. But right. basically, um, you know. It's so crazy because the way that uh, Cake Wars works is you have four people you're going against and then one goes home in the first round and only three people go to like the big mega round. And so, or whatever, you know, I don't know what they call it anymore, but um, you actually would sort of plan that second round out ahead of time. You kind of like would run through it because I mean, there's, you know, I'm sure you've seen the shows. It's like all of a sudden they have this big wooden structure that they built and it's like the wooden structure itself would take two hours. Like you're not, right. you know, so you sort of like kind of had a plan going in. And so is whoever went home, I just could never imagine being that person because it's like, Oh my God, like you, you had so much like that you were ready to do. And then you just go home. And, um, luckily I've never been eliminated early on in a competition, but that's something I wouldn't want to do. But anyway, yeah, knock, knock on wood, knock on wood. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Knocking on wood. <laughs> probably particle board okay um so it uh so those are really fast paced and not luxurious at all like we were staying in um so there are uh, most of the i've show i've done shows i've been filmed in la um weirdly enough one of the shows i did was filmed in scranton pennsylvania i was so excited because i was like oh yeah michael scott where are you at yeah, the like office, yeah. the office. there's like nothing in scranton pennsylvania by the way it was like what is going on um Denver but most of them are LA and so uh the ones in LA were like putting us in it was a little hotel motel called the Vagabond which no longer exists so I feel like I'm allowed to say it and it's like this grungy motel like it was not luxurious it was like some stuff where you're like what like you don't want to sleep in on top of the covers so they would just kind of like throw you in there and then um yeah you'd like wake up really early they would drive you around bring you to set and so it's, it was kind of crazy. And in relate, like, I guess when I compare it to Cake Wars, uh, I'm sorry, Cake Wars, uh, Is It Cake? Is It Cake was so good. <laughs> like yes. it, they really treated us so well. And I felt like they made you feel like a star. It was really cool. Like we had trailers and things. So, so I love that. <laughs> so the hotels that they put you up in are the equivalent of a bayou for hotels. That's not... <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but like no good food. So. Oh my goodness. That's the <laughs> worst. Weird uncles cooking really good food out there. That's the worst that there's no good food. I mean, at least if you're out there, you want the food, right? I mean, yes, exactly. Uh, oh my gosh. That's so funny. I'm going to have to send you a picture. Speaking of on the body, I have this and uncle and they live in a country, like country town, about an hour away. It's called Lake Arthur. And so it's, that's on the body, like yeah. the marsh, the water, the swamps. And so we showed up to Father's Day, like a Father's Day barbecue, and they opened the pit and it was just an entire alligator, like oh, no just getting way. barbecued up. Have you so have, have you eaten it? Have you eaten alligator? Oh, yes. Yes, yes. I have too. It's, yes. It's really good. Did, you, did you like it? I did like it. I did like it. Yes. Would you compare it to chicken? 
I could see the similarities. I wouldn't say that they're the same, but I could see the similarities. Yeah, it's like a, it's a white meat. Yeah. How'd you have it? Like, how was it cooked? Uh, I think it was, I, I don't even know. I I was in New York, and there was this food truck that was giving away exotic meats on a, on a like, a, a, I, I kid you not, they had crickets, cockroaches, huh? alligator. Like, it was just, like, the crickets. most. Y- yes. They're probably doing so much cricket stuff right now. <laughs> yes. It was the most outlandish things, and it was on a stick. And the challenge on a on a like a little roach coach, uh, no pun intended. But <laughs> and the whole point of his food truck was, hey, you can eat it if you eat the whole stick, it's free. But if not, it's like fifteen bucks. So it's hard because like you get it for free, and like I think at the time you like got a T-shirt. This was back before social media because this was like in okay. two thousand eleven. So this yeah, was every you can't do that anymore. Like the people are going to do it. Yes, it, exactly. Exactly. And it was just it was a really cool thing. So I did. I tried the cricket one. I did try the cockroach one. I didn't finish that one. And I did try the alligator one. And I finished those. But so I did like it. It was pretty good. It was pretty good. I, I, I liked it personally. Yeah. I didn't and think imagine it was... that it could be better because like uh, so I the fir- one of the first I was a waitress for a long time and at a Cajun restaurant that served like crawfish, everything. And they had fried alligator and it was like, it's a favorite. So people love it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I, I've never I've never had it um, like actually done up. So yeah. I'll have to I'll have to try it. Yeah. Not <laughs> not in some sort I'm gonna of I'm going to send you this picture, though, later, because you have like just opening like opening this barbecue pit in an entire alligator like i thought i was like what is happening and then i had my my maryland husband here who he was like what <laughs> you know like and he's been around in louisiana for a while but like still i i was shocked he was shocked so i'm gonna i have to it's this is the thing where it's like okay this is like we're those louisiana people now but it but i mean I, it is also like it's just w- culturally what you like and i understand because it's funny because when people think of the united states yes we are all under one umbrella of the united states but there are different cultures and there are different things that other geographic areas try out like yeah. i think of even the first time i went to uh, a greek easter and i just saw a lamb um uh, uh-huh. like uh, a full lamb being roasted over a fire and well, I, and i was like oh my goodness this is so different for me i'm not used to it I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, and my mom, she's Puerto Rican, and she would tell me that where they lived in Puerto Rico, they had a a chicken farm, and they would just have the chickens and hang them upside down, and then when they were ready to use them, they would take them, and that's how, and it would just constantly be out. So for us or for people who are not around certain areas, it might be different, like your husband, you said. Yeah. Because I think even myself, if... Somebody just opened up a, 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 you know, a big fire pit thing, and a, and I see a, a full on alligator. I might, I might be like, whoa, <laughs> like that, that's a little different. But it is really cool to also think that there's also different cultures. That that's how I view it. To me, I'm like, that's so cool though. That's that's something different. It is, yes, yes. I recently went to my first Indian wedding, and I've heard that those are. I've never been, but I've heard that those are just insanely amazing. Get on that. <laughs> it was great. It was, it was so fun. I was just like the dance and party. And I was like, this, it was so fun. I was, I loved it. So it's like, I really appreciated that. You're yeah, like, like they, that these people party. know how to throw down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It re- I mean, I was like, okay, this is sort of like, I don't know. I could, you know, like there's like this whole parade, like the groom, he gets kind of like paraded in. It's like a whole day too, or like multiple days. And it kind of reminded me of a second line, which is like a New Orleans thing where you, everyone walks down the street and like, um, like we did one at our wedding, like people usually do it at weddings or kind of, you know, you just parade, dance and party. And I was like, it was so similar. And I was like, that is so crazy that like, there's this New Orleans tradition and then this Indian like yep. tradition that are pretty similar. Yeah. And it was cool. That is really cool. Like no, that. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It is the Halloween season, which means pumpkin spice is back literally everywhere. And it is also back with Jocko Fuel. 22 grams of protein, two-pound bag. The pumpkin spice protein powder is back for a limited time just for the Halloween season. Get yours today and use promo code REYESREFLECTION to save 10% off your order. Again, REYESREFLECTION to save 10% off your order.
Back into your Is It Cake competition experience. You mentioned it was hosted by Mikey Day. And it was in the whole show, for the people who've never seen it, it's based on the social media phenomenon, right? Where they're, and I've seen it on TikTok where they have like maybe something, a cell phone or something, and you think it's a real cell phone, but then they cut it in half and it's cake. So walk me through that process. So you said that on the other ones you actually cast it, but now that were you reached out to and asked to come on the show, or did you have to go ahead and do a casting audition for this show as well? So I think that the way that it works based on all the shows that I've done, I feel like, you know, so they reached out to me oh, and that's cool. yes, they reached out to me, which was like news to me that like I was even good enough to even, it's like every show that I do, I sort of feel like I'm faking these people. Out. I'm like, Oh, they think I'm good enough. Send my best pictures. I feel like this imposter on the show. Really. It's just like a thing. I'm, I'm trying to get over it because I know that I'm actually really good. Like one of the best, like you have to, I have to like, like the self-affirmation thing yes. because I keep being like they think I'm good enough this is so weird like I better go fake them out well anyway so they actually reached out to me and so the way that I think it works is like the show like the production company hires a casting agency so usually I'll get reached out to by like a casting agent who has no real affiliation with the production company they're just like hired to find people and so then what they do is they take the people that they find and then send them to the production company and then that's when the producers will start to pick and choose an interview and everything like that so I was reached out to by the casting company and I was like, what, what made them possibly reach out to me? And it was a couple of weeks after I had made, like, I, I had never really made hyper-realistic cakes. Like I've made cakes that were realistic or, or something, you know, it looked artistic, but like it didn't, it wasn't like, oh, wow, is this a, you know, is this a coffee cup or is this a cake? It wasn't like that. And so I had recently, like my last two Instagram posts were a hyper-realistic pretzel that I made for a local, like, world of beer, like a local bar, a uh, restaurant thing and a realistic rack of ribs. And on both of them, I hashtagged is it cake. So if anybody's watching this who wants to know how to get on shows, like I, I think the power of social media, it's, yes. it's heavy because, yeah. because I just couldn't, I didn't know. But anyway, I think I never asked them to, to confirm that to me, but I think that's how that, how they found me. And um, by just searching the hashtag of is a cake or, you know, hyper-realistic cakes. And so different from my other shows, is the so I did have to continue through a casting process. They First, it's like, are you interested? And I'm like, yes. And then it's like, are you available these dates? And I'm like, yes. And then it's like, okay, we're going to do video calls. So I did one with the casting agent. And then when it got real, real, they sent me on to the production company. So at the time, I didn't really realize who I was talking to, but it was like the head, like it was the head producers, like right under like the director who was interviewing me. And um, then when it's all like, they're like, you're, we want you to be on the show. Then I had to do a one hour, like psychiatric evaluation, oh, which no way. I never did that before. So, you know, everyone is happy to know I passed that <laughs> like flying colors. They were like, wow, you did it really quick. I was like, I know how to take tests, lady. <laughs> You're like, I was a teacher. I, I gave, yeah, exactly. I gave, I I gave tests and I know how to take them. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know what you want to hear. Uh, but no, so it was a really long process, actually. And um, that's how I got on there. And it it's so crazy because you're there. So you to film, you have to be there to film the eight episodes. So it's really not something I feel like almost just anybody could do. You know, I have a daughter, so I had to leave for a long time. You know, it was like a little under a month. It was a long time to film it. And so I had to tell my daughter, like, I had to ask her and I would tell her, you know, like, um, how do you feel about mom being gone for, for so long? And I think I was gone her first day of school, which kind of like, I was like, oh man, this is sad. Um, and she was like, well, how bad do you want to be on a cake show? And I was <laughs> like, well, pretty bad. So I'm going to go, but she's so supportive. And, um, I'm actually, so me and her dad are split. We were married. We got married super young, like 21. And um, so we're split. So that actually kind of helps in that situation because, yeah. you know, she, she we have like a whole village that like stepped in for me to be able to like go. And um, 
but yeah, didn't phase her one bit that I was like going for a month. So well, it takes a village to raise a family. That's what they say. That so, is true. So that is so true. Or, or to raise a child, rather. Yeah. How did you get into baking? Because at first sight, it seems like it's just mostly a hobby for people. How did yeah. you get into that and it became something that you were like, hey, I am good at this. I am going to try to pursue this or even compete on these TV shows and things like that. What about it was like, this is something that you're going to truly pursue? So interesting because I the thought process was, was different. It was not, I am good at this. I sucked at it. <laughs> and like, so do I. I <laughs> I just wanted to be good so bad. And I was just pissed off because every cake I would do, I'd end up crying, cursing. It was ridiculous in the beginning. But um, but I was like, I want to be good and I'm going to be good. Yeah. And then that that's kind of how it grew. But the way that it really started was I was like 19 and um I had, like it was my college boyfriend at the time, and he had like all these hobbies. He was like working out and golfing and everything. And I was like, man, what, I need to get a hobby around here. Cause like this guy's really loving his hobbies. And it was just like, I needed something to like do. I need to do more at the time. Yep. And um, I went walk into like Michael's craft store or whatever. And I was just like walking around, I was going to find a hobby and I found a box of fondant. So have you had a cake with fondant on it? Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like, like, yeah, I don't, I'm not a big fan of it though. I'm not a big fan of it. I feel like nobody really is. I have one friend who like wants to eat it by the box, but, uh, which is weird. (laughs) He's weird, but, um, yeah, not many people like it. And so I actually found a a box of it and I was like, what even is this? Because I actually grew up like pretty poor and my my parents are like super hardworking like by the time my brother and sister were born we like my parents are so well off now like they it's so crazy like and I got to see it all it was so weird but um so we didn't have like like the way I looked at it I was like I've never had these like rich people cakes what is this you know like with fondant on it and um so I bought the box and then I went home baked a cake and rolled this fondant out and just plopped it on there no icing nothing i didn't know you're supposed to have like actual icing on the cake under the fondant and so it was dry and gross and but it was so pretty and i was like oh my gosh like look at this i'm so good at this posted a picture of it and then everybody was loving it and so here is how it happens so i am like a yes person i always say that the reason that i even have half the experiences in my life is because i usually say yes So it's good and bad. It has its ups and it has its downs. But um, even if I don't know how to do something, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then I'm just trying like, oh, God, let me figure out how to do this. Like This is crazy. So what happened was I posted the picture of this cake and everybody and their mama wanted one of the like they wanted to buy the cake for me. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think about selling the cakes. So I was like let's do this. Like I'm going to side gig right now. Here we are. So I accepted all these orders and like some, like people were sending me some like two tier, like some awesome looking stuff. And then mine were just coming out like rumply and looking. Mm. And so it was so sad because I really just wanted to be good. So I just kept doing it, kept doing it. And then um, I think I was gonna like probably lose some steam. And then I there was this competition and my friend Fallon who comes on the shows with me, she was going to this competition. So I wanted like girls trip, like we're gonna go. And so it's in Austin, Texas. And instead of like, it's not a TV show. So there's this whole side of cakes that a lot of people don't think of. It's not cake show competitions. It's like a convention type of thing. Like, like a, comic-con but for cakes like i don't know i've never been to comic-con i don't know but I, you, I, I understand the analogy i, okay, I, I can, like, pi- I can like picture a, i can picture what yeah. you're talking about yeah okay but so in this kind you actually decorate the cake beforehand and you bring it as like a display like a showpiece so so anyway that's when i was like you know what like i gotta do this is i'm super competitive and so that's really where i was like it it was going to stick was like that you could compete with cakes. Yes. So I was like, Oh, I I got this, whatever. So I'm like trying to pull out all the stops and making the cake move, like doing all these crazy things. And it actually came out pretty good. And I got overall like third place. So like, which was huge. 
And because I would never would have expected that. And there were all these amazing cakes there. And so I won some money, like wasn't much, but that was it. So that's really when I was like, all righty, like I'm, I'm good, good winning money, like let's go. And a funny fact about that same competition. So I don't know if you know on the show, Liz Merrick, she was the one that made like the crab in the first episode. And did she go on to win or is that someone else? No, that was Elizabeth. Oh, okay, so okay. Well, this, this girl, Liz Merrick, she is top of the line. Like when everybody found out she was on the show, we were all like, oh, like it's over. Like she's so crazy good and she's earned it. And so she has a whole online cake school and she's just doing the most. And um, anyway, she competed at that same competition that was in 2014 and she actually got first place. So it was like so crazy how the cake world is really not that big, but it's growing because social media. And so anyway, that's like sort of the history and the the starting point for my cake life. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's crazy. So yeah. it started. So your cake life started from, hey, I don't want to be a loser with no hobbies. Yes. To now it's a career. I mean, I guess yeah. I guess that's the best way to make it, right? That's yeah. That's the best way to do it. That's what I I feel like. That's what I did with this. I just wanted it to be a hobby and then it turned out to be something that I was pretty decent at, I guess, in some people's eyes. So, yeah. And the, in the growth potential, yes. you know, yes. it's, it's something so crazy. And now we're going like, I'm going to go a little businessy for a second. People are like, you know, always they'll ask me to do cakes and they're like, Oh, well, this person's your competition. And I think it's probably the same in the field of what you're doing. It's not a competition. Oh, it's no, like, yeah. I'm like, guys, no, like I love that. Like the more cake bakers in my hometown, the better. I mean, there's plenty of celebrations to go around and just like the ceiling is so high on what you can do. And I feel like it's probably the same for podcasts. And yeah, I mean, it's worldwide, like it's the growth potential. Absolutely. I've never viewed this as like a competition based thing. I've always yeah. viewed it as like, I can, if anything, I can learn, I can get inspiration. I can see what works in some people's shows and what doesn't work and things like that. And so it, it to, I agree with you. It is one of those things where it's like, I really think, yes, we can all be competitive, but I genuinely believe if you're just honest, hardworking and, and you stay in your lane and, you, nice. and, and nice and you stay true to yourself, that we all can actually do a very good job at what we do. So really cool stuff with you about how you got into that. I stink at it. I suck at cooking. I suck at baking. If it were up to me, I'd have Uber Eats 24-7. I'm just not Same. the best. <laughs> but I think it's really cool that you were able to learn something, teach yourself. Because I think I read something that said you taught yourself mostly off of YouTube videos, which yes, awesome for you to see, use a resource like YouTube, at, at, which everyone has their phone and at their fingertips, and they're able to look it up. So I think that that's really, really cool. I do want to circle back to some of your experiences on Is It Cake 2. In my opinion on the gym episode, you picked probably the hardest product in the Basu Ball. and But you used protein powder, which was really cool. What about the is, – is that just who you are innately and who you are of, like, I want to try the hardest things I want to – because you mentioned that, that you're just a naturally competitive person within yourself, and you're like, I want, I want these challenges so I can prove to myself. Is that some of the things that you did in that show? Because that was a really hard one that you – an obstacle, but you, you did it, and you did a great job. But is that just innately in you to want to achieve those goals? Yes. So – Looking back, this is probably not the show to do that on, but um, I was lucky because I, you know, I got pretty far like to where I was a staple on the show. So it makes me feel good about what I did there. But yes. So almost every time I got to pick a cake, I, I not almost every time I was the second pick. Right. So I, I always got to pick second, uh, you know, and so I was I usually had a good a good option, you know, a good amount of options. And when I was looking at these things, I was like, just sort of like trying to be smart about it. And it's a pretty quick thing. So if you're taking a long time to decide it on the show, they will rush you along. And one thing that I did Hurry is up. I always picked like so quickly yep. because I just, 
I second guess myself. I will, I will overanalyze until, until the day is done. And I think that a lot of times on in a competition or even in life, if you just, you be super like, like, um, you go with your gut kind of thing and you just assertive. So I wouldn't think about it too long. And so I saw these options and, you know, I didn't want to do the gloves because I was just like uninterested in boxing gloves. Like I also, which is like so dumb, I should just do the easy thing. But like, I just like didn't want to make that. No part of me wanted to make that. And then you also have to make two identical. So I was like, no, nope, that's not good. And then like they had the um, dumbbells. Those were a ton that needed to be identical. Like, you know, which is the hard part. So when you're making cakes, if you choose something organic, like for example, if I would make an animal or if I would make food, it's so much easier to make that hyper-realistic because those things are organic organic, and they, you know, they're going to look different. To, no two apples really look the same. Right. So that's true. That's yeah. Point. So, uh, so I was like, man, all these things, whatever, the duffel bag was so huge. That was a little more organic. Cause like, it could be like ripply, whatever, but my, one of our really good friends got this Superdome cake for as his groom's cake. And that Bosu ball just reminded me of it. And I knew it was huge and weird, but I was just like, I don't know. I just looked at it and I was like that. And everybody, it was kind of crazy because the reaction that they show on the couch was true. Like everybody was like, what? Yeah. Like I immediately was like, oh God, like Liz looked so like disappointed in my choice. And I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't pick that. But it, um, I was pretty happy with the choice and maybe I would pick that one again because, um, ah, oh, like it was, it, the problem was the time because it would have been so perfect. It was going along great. Like, but I took, I think I had to make 19 batches of cake and the time is real. Like some shows, I'm not gonna say which ones, but the time might not be real, right? You can't make some of these cakes in four hours. But the time on Is It Cake was 100% real. And baking so a it was cake. The, it was the eight hours that they said? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And baking a cake, really, it takes time. Like, especially if you want them to be good and you're not, like, turning the oven all the way up. So I think I spent, like, I don't know if I, I wasn't done really baking until, like, four hours in. It was, like, so crazy. And so, um, but, yes, that is, I think, part of who I am. Because the more that the show went on, especially on the, sh the one that I got eliminated, um, I like the toothbrushes. I was like, that's so small. You can barely even see it from that far away. Like, I should choose that. But then I really was like, I wasn't ever winning. I wasn't ever, like, going home. I wasn't ever in the bottom. Actually, on the BOSU one, I don't know. Like, I don't think they really showed it. But it was between when they were choosing, like, who was going to be the winner to play the game. It was between me and Pete. And they really, they loved it. And I was like, I was so close. I would get so close. So then on my last, you know, where I ended up going home, I picked this weird curler roller thing, but I was like, because it had the brush and I was like, this is hard. So either I'm going to go home because it sucks. Or I was like, or I'm going to, this will give me the best shot at actually winning. Cause I didn't want to just keep like skating through. Yeah. I go big or like, go home. That, yes, right? exactly. That's really where I was. And I think I said that in that episode and I got a little internet, like not backlash, but a couple of people were like, oh, you jinxed yourself. Like you shouldn't have said that. And I was like, what? I'm always going to say what I think, number one. And like, I didn't jinx myself. It was the truth. Like, yeah. you know, so. That, that, and, I mean, I home. <laughs> and, and you can't live with regret. Like, you, that's what you wanted to do. You wanted to challenge yourself. You were on this competition show. You wanted to prove yourself. And you wanted to prove the world. And I think you did. I, too, had that reaction when I saw it. I was like, damn, she is choosing the hardest thing. <laughs> that that. But, I, I mean, kudos to you. Because at the same time, I've never baked. You know, like you said, do I want to put myself out there or do I just want to coast by? And it sounds like you didn't want to just coast. In that, I believe you just brought up the curlers and the toothbrush and things like that. In that episode, you could not hide your emotions too well whatsoever. It was pretty evident that you were in transparent, that you were upset with yourself when you dropped the knife on your on the brush. But I do want to I do want to commend you. I think that that was really quick thinking of, hey, I'm just going to melt the other brushes so that way they can look similar. What was going on in your mind at that moment in time? Because I obviously, like you said, sometimes TV can play it up. 
it seems like it happened really close to the end of your baking time. Is that correct? Or was that it modified? It oh, really it did. did. It was 90 seconds until. Oh, and man. so I'm not used to, this is not me patting myself on the back or anything. I'm just not used to feeling completely helpless yeah. or giving up at all. Like I don't, I can, I refuse to, to give up. So especially like, on this platform, right? You're at, um, that's like the major thing that, you know, my career at this point. And so um, it's like, honestly, I was what in my mind, I thought I reacted so much worse, which I like to have a little poise. Like I'm a little bit crazy. I say whatever's on my head, like in my mind, I say it, but I do like, I try to be like, I don't know. I'm not going to throw a fit or be crazy. Like yeah. I don't want to be that girl. And I sort of felt like that. I did that. So I was so, I, I just felt like I was like, so like, uh, but then when I watched it back, I was like, Oh, okay. Like it was worse in my head. Yes. Cause I just kind of like go, I feel like my face went just like white. I was just like, uh. and then I think I was like, what do I do? Nothing. But then, yeah, I just, I was like, you have to do something. And then even more, because you were like, you never want to have regrets. Uh, I do only one thing on the whole show. I regret one thing. Okay, what's that? And and it's the artist in me or like something. I don't even know. I just found out it was an artist the other day. Like, you know, like I just started feeling like that. Uh, no, it was like maybe too much integrity in the work that I did. So at the end of each show, each competition, you, they don't show this part, but we place our cakes on the pedestal. So that's because like, we don't want them carrying, you know, the producers or the people running around carrying our cakes. So I took my cakes and I placed it on the pedestal. You're also allowed to place the, the dummy, the decoys as well. So we got, I placed all the decoys, whatever. And I faced my brush up. So, so the bristles were actually showing, but I could have placed it down. I could have put uh. the brush around the back. I could have did any of that. I see. What but you're like, saying. there was just something in me that needed these bristles that I worked so hard. It. I think I spent an hour alone putting these things in the, in the brush. So I was like, I wanted them to show. And I just shouldn't have done that because even Dixie, like the whole time, they really were going to pick another number, which weirds me out but whatever so the whole time they were like oh we're gonna pick this 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 and then in the last second dixie's like no pick this one and then they for whatever reason the mom just like clicked mine and then dixie was like yeah it's the bristles like i could see them and like whatever and i was just like ah oh. like if i would have just put it down like, they, it wouldn't even it. been a thing yeah ah oh. that does but, think that 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 could be some sort of like compromise in a way within yourself because that can be some sort of like if I you know you know what I mean you know how like um for example if you lose a sport game by one point how you're the whole time you're like oh if I like just did this if I just yeah. did that if that and so that might just be a little bit of compromising but I do agree with you that there I see I didn't know that you could have reconfigured mm -hmm. to alter the appearance of it and that would have that maybe would have helped you but. It, that probably was that fiery personality of Kayla. Yeah. That was like, they have to see my hard work of the bristles. So either way, you went big and you went. And unfortunately, you did go home, which was yes. a bummer. I, I was really pulling for you. But you did have some really cool experiences. What were some of the other experiences of even talking? Like you mentioned Dixie D'Amelio. You, mm -hmm. you were in the same presence as all of them. Mikey Day, I think Joel McHale. So mm -hmm. what was it like being in the presence of these celebrities and things like that where you're, cause you're full on interacting with them as you mentioned yeah. previously, how you, Mikey challenged you to ride the unicycle. So yes. share some of those experiences. What was that like interacting with these celebrities? So usually on these cake shows, it'll be like people I don't even know. And I'm not so like on the up and up with the whole Hollywood scene, like there's some of the competitors knew everyone. You're and I'm not like, well versed. Oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, man, I don't know anyone. It's killing me. Um, but on episode one, I walked in and from the back, I saw Blake Anderson and I oh, I love Blake Anderson. Him. Yes. Like, I love that man. He is so cool. So I was just thought he was so I was so excited immediately. And I wasn't competing that round anyway, but 
that was cool. I've did never... you used to watch uh, Workaholics? I think he was on that show. You used to? Did you yeah, used to watch? I currently, that? it currently just like if we're putting something on, like I, it just let it runs. It's yeah. hilarious. I love that show. Yes. Um and and like I was like, this cannot be his everyday hair, right? Like that's just for the show, or like that's just for his. But then like when I saw, it, I was like, that's his hair. Yes, he owns that hair. Like love it. <laughs> Yeah, he has like really curly hair. It's insane. Yeah, it, but he does this crazy comb over thing, and it's just like going everywhere. And I really didn't think that was his daily hair, but it is, and I love him for that. Um, but it was it was cool being in the presence of all these people, the Demilios. I had no idea who they were at the time, so it really didn't affect me that much. Now I know who they are because I followed them, and I'm like, wow, they're millionaires or whatever, and like that's really cool. And they're from Lafayette, which is wild. Like, oh, they are. From, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was crazy. I was like, that was unexpected. And, um, Joe McHale, I, what he was on community. That's what I know him from. And I also know him from, is it, uh, not, it's, a. Uh, he's on one with Adam Sandler. I don't know, but he's like the blended. That's what it is. I think yeah, he's, he's like the, the jerk dad. He's the jerk. Yes. You're right. Yes. He's the jerk dad. I, remember I was that. like, Oh my God, I know this guy. Yes. And so kind of like, was cool to see him didn't love him as far as like um his react like i think th the people who judge these cakes don't hate him or anything <laughs> but the people who judge these cakes i don't think they realize that we just sweat like our blood sweat and tears just got laid out for hours you know on our feet and like it's everything to us as, as the artists and as the decorators and our, we're like, our career is here, especially because like, it's either go home or not now. So, and they, and they would just be kind of like trying to be silly or funny about the cakes and like really talk bad about some aspects of the cakes, not really mine, thank God, because, but like, they would say some things that, I, and like, he was real on it, but he's a comedian and he was being funny, but he would just like say like, oh, this cake looks just like looking like a dead whatever. And we're like, oh, like we're right here, bro. Yeah. Like, like it was kind of sad. Um, and like when he actually tried my protein powder, I was like, yeah, hopefully it's in a good way. By the way, that protein powder filling is delicious. And um, he was like, yeah, sure. But that's, he was actually really nice about it in person, but they cut it to make it look like, like he totally burned my recipe. I was like, "What?" Like the satire was like uh, was very directed towards you, but in real yes, life, he I'm was like, like, "What?" I thought that was like, a great idea when you brought it up. When I heard you say it in the episode, I was like, "As a person who does fitness, that would be so like I, I love working out and things like that." If somebody said to me, "Listen, I'm baking a cake with protein powder," I would I would be like, "Boom." bam you're like yes. the fact that well, you even consider that option i mean that's yeah. impressive well, i thought it was like on theme like i was trying to do this whole on theme thing i yep. was like cool it's a workout episode i was wearing my body by cake shirt which <laughs> i love that shirt that was a good thank shirt. you those shirts are all my designs this i have one on right now uh like i love shirts like fun shirts yeah and so when i found out i was gonna be on the show i like designed like i just submitted all my designs and then um oh, they really just cool. they so they they make you send them like 14 outfits so there's only eight like you know episodes so you ultimately choose your outfit and they just out of the 14 each day they would tell you hey tomorrow you're wearing this so you didn't really get to pick so i had no idea that it would be a workout episode or whatever really it worked out you know because body by cake i love that that was one of my favorite ones and so i was just so the whole theme thing i was like body by cake working out protein powder and um you yeah checked and so, all the boxes right i know but i think so that wasn't the show for it again because it's like a protein powder cake although on theme really cool probably tastes good whatever like you got the most decadent cake next door you know like yeah. pete was making like the most delicious and i was like man like that would be a good idea. Just make the best cake you know how to make. But I was just trying to stay on theme. And I did it in the college episode because I did PB&J cake. Yep. And again, delicious. But I was like, you know, you're poor in college, like PB&J. But it wasn't as well received. But I, I thought it was cool. I and thought it was cool, too. I, I, I'm i with you on that. And and in the college one, you said that you were in a sorority. So, yes. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we learned a little bit about you then, too. No, I, yeah, think I had that... a whole lot of like Kappa Deltas reach out to me for, since the show and, and like, I was yeah. like, oh, sister. And I was like, that's cute. That's fun. <laughs> I think ultimately that's what helps you in these competition shows is the, your versatile thinking, the way that you're able to 
grab inspiration and say, I'm going to use this because of this and I'm going to use that. And I think myself watching you on the TV, it was something in which I was like, you know what? I, I can feel it. I can, like I said, fitness, same thing, protein powder or uh, sorry, PB and J college, mm-hmm. cheap, fast, boom. Yeah. So I, I definitely, I definitely understand all that. So unfortunately you. you were eliminated very close to the finale. What is the biggest takeaway that you can say from Is It Cake 2? What was the biggest takeaway of the that experience for you? Um, so the probably the biggest takeaway is, you know, one, I would never trade it. It it wasn't easy and there was a lot of like it was very different from other shows that I've done. But everyone on that show, you know, all of my peers, the other cake decorators. Uh, we got some, we got connected in a way that like, like going through the trauma yeah. of a show, right? Cause it's so, it's like little sleep, little interaction. We were actually, you're, you're locked away. Like there's no, you're not just like chilling on the evenings, eating dinner out. Like you are just really secluded. And so, um, witnessing how everyone was with each other we didn't treat each other like oh our competition we weren't nasty and um if anything in the show i saw over and over again people stepping out of their workstation to help other people and i gained some lifelong connections with those people and i don't like i always feel like i'm really not a good friend girl like i don't know i don't know in my adult life i'm like i can't like, I don't know. I'm not good at friends. Like, I have a lot of friends, but I met them all, like, in elementary. It's like, yeah. I met back when I was cool. No one's sticking anymore. I'm you not know? cool anymore. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I have a lot of acquaintances, and I'm so friendly. But it's, like, hard to really get a, a person that you would consider to be, like, a best friend. It's true, yeah. And um, so I think that we sort of, maybe some people more than others in the group, though, of Is It Cake. But so we still communicate. We're still friends. We hang out. I was in L.A. hanging out with Justin uh, uh, from he was in the first two episodes like a month ago. So pretty much, you know, I just learned that like connections and stuff, that's really the most important thing out of all of these life experiences. And uh you know, be thinking quick. Like I actually love myself a little more after going on that show and kind of looking back and learning things. And I'm like, man, you know, like I am good at this, whether, you know, I don't know how it's received or how people will view this. And I got a lot of positive feedback from viewers that made me feel good. So I feel like people really got who I was because I'm a happy person. I'm eternally optimistic to a fault, which is not always good. Um, but, but yeah, like I'm just, I just, it was the best experience and I have the best friends now because of it. And you're a fighter and you don't quit and you're competitive. And I think that all resonated through the TV. So Thank I think, I, and, really and I think that you're completely right because it's, <laughs> you said the traumatic experience. It's true. Like that, that's what helps connect individuals is, is those experiences. So the fact that you had those experiences and now you they're lifelong experiences that no one will ever be able to take away from you. And now you have those with these, these individuals is, is something that you'll be able to take for the rest of your day. So I think that that's really cool. I think that's, I think that sounds awesome. It is. Thank you. Ready for the fun part of the pod. At least, at least I like to think this is the fun part. Okay, right? we'll do it. I'm always ready for the fun. <laughs> All right, here we go. So I'm going to start off with this, which I, I got this from TikTok. I want to blindly rank cakes with you okay Ooh, so i'm yes. gonna say five cakes and you're gonna say one through five blindly of what you think is the best okay okay so you're just gonna say them yeah i'm gonna say them and then you're gonna say uh i think that one is four for me and okay. and we're gonna go in the in a list like uh, tasting or like looks uh tasting tasting oh okay cool yes. love that all right so all right i'm gonna start you off with a hot one i think pineapple upside down cake Okay. Wait, which one's the best? One's the best. One is the best. One is the best. Pineapple upside down. Five. Okay. (laughs) I figured. Okay. All right. Gave you a softball there. All right. Chocolate cake. Two. Okay. Because you don't know what's left. I like it. (laughs) All right. Red velvet. One. Oh, really? All right. Yes. Vanilla. Three. Okay. And carrot. 
Ah, Karen falls right in the perfect spot. Or <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Wow, you boom, boom, boom. You really so red velvet is really your favorite cake. Yes, and it's the best cake that I make uh, because re everybody eats red velvet with cream cheese frosting, but cream cheese frosting is not the original frosting. It's actually this. It's called ermine frosting it's like a boiled milk icing and that is the icing that's supposed to go with red velvet and it tastes the best it's like a really old school one i got the recipe from my grandma oh so good well grandma knows best i mean I, I, nothing tastes better than grandma's cooking that that that's literally what they say that is true <laughs> could you spell ganache for me oh yes all right well, <laughs> g-a-n a C H E. Yeah, yes. Yep. I actually didn't know what ganache was. I didn't know. What? Okay. Yeah, ganache is a weird one. I, I even it took me a while in my cake career to even learn about it. But when I did, that's when I went from like I'm okay at cakes to like being good. It's a really good medium. Yes. To use. Okay. I like it. Have you had it though? I've never had it. I, or at least I don't so you wanna know what's funny, actually. All right, now it's only two ingredients. It's so good. What is like what are the, what are the two ingredients? It's chocolate yep. and um, heavy whipping cream. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I probably have had it in, in some variation. Yeah. And you probably didn't know. Yes, probably. But I will share this. I'm actually admittingly, and I hope this doesn't, because this has been a great pod and I hope this doesn't lose our, our, our kinship here. <laughs> I actually am not a big cake person. I act, no, and, I don't, okay. and I don't know why. A, I'll eat it. I'll eat a piece. But it, it's funny. My sister-in-law bakes. And there was one time where she asked my brother, she and I'll never forget the story. She said, hey, what cake does Nathaniel like? And my brother goes, you know, in my 25 years of life, I've never seen Nathaniel eat one piece of cake. That's what he <laughs> said, flat out. And, oh and, and I don't know why. I, You know, I love ice cream cake. I don't know if that's like. Me a, too. I love a, that. Okay. Yeah, I love ice cream cake. And I do love cakes, but I have to be in the mood for it. That's what yeah. it is. And. Funny enough, when I'm at a birthday party or weddings, or you would think I'd be in the mood for a cake, but I'm not in the mood for a cake. At <laughs> You're like, time. this is not the time for cake. I don't know why, and so my body just rejects the cake. But yeah, it's understandable. Of... Not everybody. It's you know, it's not for everyone. But yeah. you can look at them. Yes, and and, mm -hmm. and when I see your work, and when I see even like I said on TikTok, when I see it, I'm like, that's got to that cannot be a cake. That is a Coke can, and sure <laughs> enough. They cut through and it's. I love it, that. That's a, so fun. So it's really impressive. If somebody were to write a book about you, what do you think the title would be? Hmm. I'll let you sit. I'll let you sit on this one for a little bit if you oh, want. Oh man, Very yeah, pensive. that was. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, crazy sweetness. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Ties in who you are, <laughs> things like that. Yeah, I like it. Besides baking, what does Kayla like to do? I love to travel. Okay. I love to drink wine and champagne. <laughs> wine and champagne, nice. Yeah, really. I like I like st like studying it, like trying all the nuances, like knowing all the things about it. Yep. Um, and I love to read. So 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 the so the mixing, the like I've seen <laughs> yeah. I've seen people do that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when I was in college, I studied abroad in Paris, and one of the courses was wine marketing. Yep. And so it was just like I was 19 and drinking wine, and I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. And like <laughs> I, there was, I should have learned so much, and now I would just like love to retake that course, you yes. know, because I just was there for the wine then now it's like I, I would like to learn the things but right now you're here for the learning not just the yes, alcohol exactly. intake and, but you yeah. said you love to read and you love to travel where's yeah. one place that you would love to travel to um man so I went to Finland not that long ago um and I would like to go I want to go to Norway I think that's another and I don't know when I'll get back up there because god that's a that's a a long kind of like traveling but i want to i want to check out norway now but that's a bucket list for you norway yeah because yeah. i don't know like when i'll really get back up that way but you know nice be cool. but you're going yeah. to the philippines you said in next month have you ever been to the philippines never okay no, i'm very excited miko is also going from the show okay uh, oh, and yes. Liz as well nice so you'll, you'll you'll be able to connect with some people that you went through that trauma with nice yes and miko's from the philippines and they're like famous for their mangoes i've never had a mango so i'm gonna have one there i'm saving it up wait you've never had a mango at all 
No. So I think oh. I've had like a mango daiquiri or <laughs> something and it was just so good. Or mango margarita. Yeah. I just did not like it. Yeah. And I've never just like had a fresh mango. Really? I just don't know why it's not like presented itself to me. Like, I don't know. In El Salvador, they'll take mangoes and papayas off the tree and okay. cut it in half. And then they'll sprinkle just a little bit of like sea salt on it and they'll eat it just like that. And it, uh, it's so good. I don't know why. I, I haven't done it in a, lo in a long time, but I, I am a big mango person. So hopefully you get that experience of a true yeah, I hope they're good. Mango. Yes, they are. I they're like good. them. I like them. Uh, this one is kind of a fun one for me. What okay. conspiracy theory do you most believe in? But before you answer that, okay, hold on. I got something for you. Yes. All right. So there you go. So what conspiracy theory do you want? <laughs> well, I have so fun I'm, on the show. It's funny that you're talking about aliens. I think aliens are like the thing right now. Yes. Um. So I don't. So I would say aliens, but I don't think that's even a conspiracy anymore. Well, I guess it is, right? I guess it's, I feel like it's it's debunked, right? Aliens are real. That it, everyone who I've asked that lately, and they've said the same thing. They said it's not even a conspiracy theory anymore. But it is aliens. They're like, yeah, aliens. Yeah. So actually, no, it is, though, because the government conspired to hide them for so long. Right. Yeah, yep. Oh. Yes. Um, so I that's the one, you know, I was asked that in a in a job interview a long time ago. Were you really? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And it was like, you know, you know, how good are you in this situation? And and, and then the, he just threw it in there. Like, do you believe in aliens? <laughs> I was like, yes. And then we just kept going. And I was like, okay. <laughs> that he was, was like, for, I want to see how you think on your feet. That was for his own personal ask. <laughs> yeah, like he was tallying up. <laughs> I was watching the <laughs> he Netflix He was trying to get thing. allies. <laughs> yes. Um, Encounters is like just on Netflix. I was watching it right before this. I was like prepping. Yep. Uh, I was just watching it. And so that's a good one. Have you watched that yet? I have not seen it. I, I will have to check it out. I, I do believe in aliens too because I'm pretty sure I saw a UFO in my life. I I, I I share this story to people and it, it. it's tough because you have to like some people think you're absolutely insane and some people are like, yeah. oh, no, I'm actually curious and I'm interested and I'll share the story. So one time I was driving on the highway. It was like maybe 930 at night. So not too late, but it was in the summer. So the skies were still visible, so to speak. It wasn't pitch black. Yeah. And I saw a saucer like object up in the sky. And I'm looking at it, and I, I, I'm, I'm also driving on the highway, so I'm trying to be careful. And but at the same time, I'm watching it, and I notice that it lit up, and then it shot up and went away. And I try to look. Admittingly, I, I obviously did not get out of the car and look, and I was on the highway, so I can't, I couldn't <laughs> yeah. like, I couldn't like Go stop ahead. what I was doing. But I did look around, and I was like, that is nowhere to be found, and it super speed it was just gone out of my life and i was like wow that is that is something so i love that yeah yeah so I, yeah, i'm always a little skeptical like to believe in conspiracies like ever since like you know i don't know when i was younger like santa claus when they debunked that one for me i was like i'm out yeah i'm out i'm believing anything now no that but, broke um, your heart that broke your heart yes yes yeah. it was a big one um but no so i do i totally believe and actually now that like all this alien stuff's coming to light, I'm more inclined to believe other conspiracy theories because it's like all the things you watch in shows with aliens, like it is all exactly what the people who have said they've seen them. Yep. It's like that. They're like, oh, it's like a saucer with the thing on the top. And I'm like, oh, that's like in the movies. So, but yeah, they got it from somewhere. So it's like, I feel like all of these, yes. things, all the things come from somewhere. Yes. That's what, Ooh. that's what, that's what my friend said. My friend said, they have to have this inspiration from somewhere. They can't just go ahead and just make it up and say it, that it looks like this. I, I was going to ask you, so do you believe that they're like green people or do you believe that they look like you and I, like regular people? Well, go watch that show. Okay. But so I don't think they're probably green. I feel like they're probably grayish. Okay. I don't know. Right. But um, you know they had that like that thing in Mexico, that one that they, yes. they just found. So I was like, wow, like it has a little big head and everything. The thing that surprised me the most is like they, they have this one thing on Netflix, one of the encounters, and it was like 60 
children saw it. So it was oh. like on the playground, whatever. And like most of them saw like this spaceship but like three or four of them who it kind of like ruined their life because they became like the crazy people saw an oh. actual like being and one thing that surprised me is they said like they explained it like big eyes whatever big head but one said it had black hair kind of like michael jackson and i was like man do they have hair because that's one thing i never thought about yeah i never thought about that Whoa. either i never thought about that either all right really cool stuff what yeah. is what is one piece of advice that you would give to someone who wanted to be in your shoes um, say yes to the opportunities, right? Like just if there's something that seems too big for you to accomplish or something seems like you don't think you're good enough, just do it anyway. Just go Because, uh, you know, like as it, a lot of it's mindset, a lot of it is mindset. And like, oh, if I you agree. are willing yeah. to fight for it, if you're willing to like stay up an extra hour, like that's one thing, like when everybody goes to sleep, if I don't feel like I'm good enough, I'm not going to sleep. I'll work however hard I need to work or however long. And I think if you just like say yes and continue to put yourself in these positions uh, and in these, you know, positions to achieve great things that maybe sometimes you'll fall down. But chances are one of the times if you continue to say yes and do the things that scare you, that at least one of the times you'll probably find some sort of success. I agree with that. And I, I used to say that to some of the kids that I used to work with and coach. I used to say to them, I used to say, you can't, nothing ever good happens by accident. You yes. don't see somebody who's in fantastic shape and say, how did you get that? I don't know. I woke up and whoops. <laughs> they have to work hard. They have to put themselves out It doesn't there. just happen. And also, yeah. a lot of the times, it doesn't, it's not easy. No. Like easy, no. everybody would do it, right? You're right. So. Exactly. I love that. That is great advice because I, I, I genuinely agree with that. And I went to an Ed Sheeran concert over the summer and John Mayer came. And that's actually one of the things he said. He said to the audience, he said, you know, I've never performed at Gillette. And Ed Sheeran asked me if I wanted to perform here. And I just said, yes. And he said, so in life, go say yes to the adventure. Go. Because yeah. you never know where it will lead you. So I love that it piece is. of advice. It's true. Not yeah. a dress rehearsal, man. We only get one. That's right. Yes, yeah. you're right. All right. Final thing is the chat pack. Okay. So okay. the chat pack. I'm going to read you a question from the chat pack and I want you to answer it. Okay. 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 Let's see. Now, if it has too much words, I might not read it. No, I'm just kidding. All <laughs> right. Here we go. If you could take any job for just one month, what job would you like to have? And then it says, assume that you have the skills and knowledge to perform the job adequately. So any job for one month. Oh, man. I would want to be like, I don't even know if this is a real thing. I, it's got to be. Yeah. One of those like psychologists that works in the prison. Really? Okay. Yeah. Because like, that's you know, spooky. that's always so like, what's up with these people? I just want to talk to them. And be, and be like, hey, can you let me know why you're crazy? Please. Talk to me. <laughs> yes. Please talk to me. <laughs> like crazy stories things yeah i like that i think i would do that it is crazy <laughs> stories the saying goes truth is stranger than fiction just because there are some things that you hear and i'm like whoa i i, I would never imagine that i would never imagine that before we wrap up i i wanted to touch up on your company your business we and mm -hmm. i and you'll plug in your socials and where people can find you and all that stuff to see your work of art but talk to me a little bit about your business cheers the cake I obviously okay. will plug that in, but I want to hear a little bit about it. What, what are you doing? What are you offering? Things like that. So cheers to Kate currently is this like little baby wild animal <laughs> and it's growing and it's crazy because, um, what I do is I, I make cakes locally. So I will make cakes here and there. I don't, it's not, it's not what I'm doing every weekend to pay the bills. You know, it's just, it's like my passion and like, I'll do them here and there locally. So I can do groom's cakes, um, wedding cakes, whatever. I am more apt to choose cakes that are like really fun and out there. I really don't like to do just like tiered basic things, yeah. but that's kind of where I've been. And so I'm now transitioning into this teacher role oh, in the fine. cake community. So locally I teach, cake camps and cake classes and things. And those are really good and they, they're full and great. And then the next step, which is my current, you know, where I'm at currently is to take this teaching and bring it online. And so I'm, I'm trying to, and it's, 
it's happening soon. Like this month is the month that's supposed to kind of like go live. And it's like online cake school where, you know, really affordable, like five bucks a class kind of a thing. Wow. You can buy a class and then you, you know, you own this video of me pretty much showing you how to do some skill or how to bake a recipe or whatever, something like that. So that's really so cool. That's, that's kind of, yeah. And, um, and I do like tutorials online. I just got a YouTube channel. And so I, huh, it's like so hard to like feel confident and like posting these things. Absolutely. But like yeah. mostly uh, you can like, I'm real. I, Instagram is like really where I put a lot of my attention, um, but I'm branching out. And so, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Love to hear that. That's a great model to have of you and the online platform, because especially where that's the world everyone is going to. Yes. So you being yes. able to do that will be very yeah. good and for you. And it combines like my teaching, you know, background and my cakes and it kind of just the best fit for me. Yeah. So plug in your socials. Where can people find you and things like that? Um, so Instagram, it's just uh, at, uh, you know, cheers to cake Kayla. And then um, it's cheers to cake dot com. Cheers the cake on Facebook. Cheers the cake on YouTube. Uh, luckily, Cheers the cake was kind of like totally available everywhere. So, and also now on Threads, uh, I'm trying to like get more into that. I'm not so good at it. When you like commented on my thing, that's why I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it because like yeah. nobody's like I'm getting no interaction on there. So, so, so that's the funny thing. I that's what I because I I had DM'd you. I'd emailed you, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and shoot my shot on threads. I'm going to go ahead because, like you said, I was like, that's the least amount of interaction that people have. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and sh that's shoot for smart. it. Go so. to everybody there because it's, it's so hard. I've gotten asked to be on, like, 20 podcasts. Yeah. I did I did an, another one. I did What's Your Sand Calp, and then I'm doing yours. Yours is only, like, the second one. But it's like I was getting bombarded, and I was like, uh, I can't. You know, I couldn't focus on it. But then on threads, it really was like – easy to kind of it's like the one thing in there so I was like all right let's do it and then i watched your stuff and it seemed really fun and cool and so i was like good i'm glad i i, I hope you had a good time on I the did. razor I loved it. thank you so much for having me of course well kayla i really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to chat with me you are now on a friend of the show which is almost as cool as being an avenger so there you go you are <laughs> i i i, I sworn you in so uh <laughs> Thank you so much again for doing this. That is going to do it for this episode of the Razor Reflection Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, and make sure you follow me on the socials as mentioned. And as always, may you live, may you love, and may you thrive. I'm Oprah, and I love you all. What's up, everybody? Nathaniel Ray is here, and get this. I am working with a company that Mark Cuban invested in. It is Mad Rabbit Tattoo Aftercare Skin Products. You can go ahead and create your own bundle today and use promo code Ray's Reflection to save 20%. Again, Ray is Reflection to save 20%. Get yours today.